Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal back with the latest and greatest Mr. Informal podcast. We are on the 139 Mr. Informal podcast. I go by the name of Mr. Informal. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are being safe and certainly I hope you are healthy. And hopefully you are actually... uh, Keeping your word when it comes to your New Year's resolution. As you know, it is 2021. The year 2021. So, what are the four topics for this 139? But first, please do not forget to add me on Instagram. M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L And check out my website, mrinformal.com M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com So these are the four topics for the Mr. Informal Podcast 139. So apparently there's a new way of uh, paying with microchip nails. Yes, putting a chip on your nails that could become a payment uh, process. Number two, what's the issue going on with Bottega Veneta? Yes, there are some issues going on with them. Number three, USA Textiles is getting some boost. I wonder what that could be. And then last but not least, as you know, loungewear, also exercise wear, all those kinds of uh, clothing have been on the trend. Could sleepwear be next? Well, I don't know. Apparently everyone is staying home, so I would not be surprised. So those are the four topics for the Mr. Informal Podcast. I hope you enjoy. And so let's go ahead and start the podcast. This article is from Hype Bay titled Wireless Payment Wireless Payments Set to Become Easier Than Ever with NFC Microchip Nails. That is interesting. So Lenore Beauty Lounge a Salon located in Dubai is offering probably one of the most high-tech manicure treatments for its client uh, dubbed the smart nail the nails come with a tiny microchip that uses nfc this means by tapping on the tip of your finger the smart device like a phone you can easily transfer information such as your business card instagram whatsapp according to the shop's promotional video smart nail could potentially be developed to support contactless payments although the current microchip cannot hold as much data uh, these Dubai can try smart nail for themselves a high-tech manicure price at 250 uh, or uh, dirhams or that's 68 dollars for the first application so that is quite interesting so as you know we already had contactless payment that that is on the card I've had it for a long time all the way back in 2009 and also we've had it in our phones certainly we've had these Bluetooth trackers or these small chips that can also hold a lot of data and I mean microchip on nails I'm not entirely sure how that's going to be I mean what if it falls off I mean I would be concerned about the security or how much it can stick itself to your nails I mean I'm pretty sure it can't last forever what if you're taking a shower I mean I, I'm one I wonder the practicality of this technology the only scary part is what if they inject it in your nails I would not be happy about that but I mean sticking it like a you know what I mean, maybe this is good for women. I mean, you know, women go to manicures. They love sticking colored nails on top of it. So, I mean, it may work out for women. I mean, you know, women who don't like to touch many things that have germs on them when they go to stores. So, I mean, it may work out. But the technology is certainly intriguing because, you know, when you want to pay, obviously you pay with your hands and the closest thing there is are your nails or your uh, palm print whatever 
So it's going to be interesting how the technology will be. Now, they say that the payments is still on working, um, probably work in progress because uh, right now the microchip cannot hold a lot of data, but maybe in the future it can. So we'll see. I also am wondering about the battery since it's a microchip it certainly needs some kind of electricity and so what kind of battery there will be um, but the, te the technology is quite intriguing because I cannot believe how chips are so small nowadays that it can be injected can be sticked I mean it could be put anywhere that you you probably won't even notice it you probably won't even see it unless you actually focus on it and so the these silicones are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and uh we'll see how contactless uh, payments will be on this chip but i mean i would not be surprised if they're not the only one who's actually um creating and improving these types of technology on to the second topic from Hypebeast. Bottega Veneta has left social media, deleting Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Wow. So, today, Bottega Veneta, uh, today, which is, I, I don't know, whatever today is, deleted its social media accounts on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. The Italian luxury brand, currently helmed by creative director Daniel Lee, has not made a statement about the reason and duration about the social media blackout but perhaps they have already laid the groundwork for a much low-key approach its spring and summer 2021 collection was presented before a short list of industry leaders big name influencers in contrast to swat of attendees you typically see lining the runway fashion week nonetheless the move to erase social media is quite novel businesses fashion right rightly notes fashion growing Reliance on social media as a marketing tool and direct line of communication with customers, especially in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. Over the past year, many fashion brands have adopted and expanded their social media strategies to the new normal, even embracing burgeoning platforms like TikTok. So that is going to be interesting. So nobody, nobody really knows why they shut it off. I mean really nobody knows I mean I'm thinking does Bottega Benetta need a reliance on social media um I don't think so does Bottega Benetta needs Instagram TikTok Facebook I mean I don't think so do they need Twitter no I mean their website is enough I mean their stores is enough I think that you should let the product speak is speak for itself if you if people like the product they like the product no matter no matter what you see in social media now do they care about marketing of course they do come on like they care about celebrities wearing their stuff using their stuff of course they do uh, in terms of the quality, certainly I've been to a Bottega Veneta store. I mean, I've seen the quality, the quality is top notch, certainly. Something typical of Italian designs or Italian brands. And, but to go all out, um, I don't really know. Maybe something have happened in their internal company. I mean, something, maybe some type of argument, some type of disagreement. No, no one really knows as of right now. The only thing I can think of is they may be trying to reset. They, they are probably changing their marketing scheme. I mean, they're trying to change some kind of a marketing or some kind of connection with its customers. Certainly, they don't want to lose customer. That's definitely they don't want. But number one for sure is they don't need any influencers. They don't. If I was a marketing team, I wouldn't need an influencer. I would just go to YouTube and uh, make videos of certain products, of you know certain products that is new, that is quality, that is practical. But that's just me. I'm pretty sure these Italian 
or Bottega Veneta type brands care about people and their influence. But for me, it's all about the product. They show the product, let the product speak for itself, show how it's made, show the practicality. I mean, I'm not sure if practicality would come into mind when it comes to Bottega Veneta, but I do know that they, but their suits are practical. But going back to the leaving social media, I mean, I don't know what's really happening. There could be some type of uh, internal problems that they are having. So um, we'll see. But certainly, uh, in, to, in the article it says in 2019, brands were projected to spend $8.5 million on influencer marketing alone. But a report uh, that year found that influencer fraud collectively cost brands $1 billion. Wow. Moving on to the third topic from Heddles. House of Representatives passes bill to incentivize domestically produced textiles in the USA. That's interesting. So last month, December 7, the House of Representatives passed the National Defense Authorization Act of 2021 fiscal year. At the complex bipartisan approved budget, it's chock full of measures to keep the United States defense measures strong, but one part of particular beneficial. The Berry Amendment is a measure that ensures the U.S. government prioritizes domestic manufacturers when appropriating goods for national defense. And as explained by the National Council of Textile Organization, defense contract, uh, contracts are a huge boon to American textiles producers. The Berry Amendment was first applied in 1941, but it was officially assigned to law in 1994. In recent times, uh, acquisition order was 150,000, uh, which Republican-controlled Congress raised 250,000 in 2018. So that is interesting. Certainly, as you know, um, I think it was last year, or it could be, it could have been earlier this year. I, no, it was last year. Cone denims closed uh, for the most part. I think there's still some, some very tiny bit. But we still have tanneries here, obviously, uh, leather tanneries. We still have cotton producers here. We still have makers of textiles in the Midwest. Obviously, USA produces cotton, and we have that. Now, certainly this is a great, great deal for the USA manufacturers out there. I mean, if you are a cotton textile, a fabric, tech, uh, fabric uh, company, fabric maker, textile producer, letter producer, whatever, this is a big win for you. Certainly, you have, you, you know, the U.S. government basically incentivizes it. It gave you a big boost. And, and, and uh, basically, you are a priority to the American people. And so, don't be, I've, look, I've always thought, when it comes to denim, we're talking about just denim here, okay? I have always thought that the American denim were always the best. People say it made Japanese, but here's the thing. The Japanese uses the old American machine. And that's why I said American. American denim to me have always been the best. Now, the reason why Japanese are the best now, probably because they probably bought all the old USA machines and now they're making them. Come on, let's be honest. I don't think Japan produced cotton or maybe they do maybe in some parts but for to grow cotton you know you have to have the right temperature surprise warm to hot so not only that US has more cotton producers than Japan so when it comes to denim i actually think denim when it comes to denim americans will, are always number one it just so happens that japanese overtook them but um, maybe this bill does something to the american producers not just cotton not just denim alone okay it could be anything again it could be leather it could be uh cotton twill certainly denim is up there cotton canvas Con canvas is a big huge deal, especially if you are in the working trade. You got to have rugged, tough clothing or accessories. 
And certainly uh, Americans are always fighting with the Chinese in regards to clothing and textiles. But certainly, hopefully, hopefully, this bill does something to the American producers out there who make textiles. On to the last topic from RetailDive.com titled as Comfort Clothing Rose, Atleta launches into sleepwear. Amid a consumer behavior shift toward comfortable clothing, Gap owns Atleta. For those who don't know, Gap owns Atleta. Tuesday, on Tuesday, launched its first sleepwear collection, according to company press release. The brand's foray into sleepwear starts with 14 pieces focused on providing comfort for recovery. What is that? I don't know what that means, but it will add new styles seasonally. The collection was inspired by listening to session with athletic customers and the company's resident sleep expert. What? <laughs> the company's resident sleep expert. At Atleta is pitching the sleepwear launch as a natural extension of the lifestyle brand. It is built around empowering women to activity. Uh, Atleta is taking a leisure wear focus a step further with a launch into sleepwear. Atleta is uniquely positioned to bring this to the market as it continues to ignite a community, active, healthy, and confident women by supporting her throughout the entire day. The company said in a press release. That's interesting. So, could sleepwear be the next trend instead of the comfort uh, clothing? Or even the exercise clothing, as you know, the Lululemons of the world and the shark uh, shorts, whatever they call it. So, is sleepwear the next big thing? Honestly, I don't know. But if we keep staying home, I would not be surprised that it could be the next big thing. Now, when it comes to winter, sleepwear is certainly a big thing because you want to be covered up as much as possible and you want to be warm. In the summer, I mean, not so much. I mean, I don't like to wear pajamas or even type of uh, sleep um, as pajama set in the summer because, you know, it gets hot. And not only that, now you have a blanket, it gets even hotter. So you don't want to go through that. So it depending on the design, I mean, maybe Atleta will, will bank on this really big. Not only that, I mean, women certainly, maybe they love to look great in when they sleep. Certainly, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing that too. Looking great, looking fashionable when you sleep. That's pretty good. Uh, so check this out in the, uh, in the article, a paragraph, a pre-holiday study by the MPD group predicted that sweatshirts, sweatpants, active bottom, sleepwear, and socks would make up 31% of the total U.S. apparel spend over the holidays, up from 26 year prior in companies that specialize in comfort clothing have seen sales spikes during the pandemic. Well, there you go. So, um... Again, is this going to be the next big thing? Don't be surprised if it is. And again, don't be surprised if it doesn't. But depending on the influencers and also celebrities who show their TikTok with sleepwear and looking fashionable with their sleepwear, that I mean, if that happens, you know it. they're going to hit it big and they're going to be one of the few brands or could be a brand that could uh, start it up. Could be a big brand that could... I mean, certainly make a lot of money from this because they are one of the first ones to do it. So it is going to be interesting how they do it. Not only that, Gap itself is doing bad. So maybe Gap has a few companies under its belt that is doing great. And that is maybe um, trying to be ahead of the trend. Um, Want to be the leaders of it. So... And it's quite surprising because Atleta was more of a Lululemon uh, activewear competition to them. I mean, that's why their name is Atleta. They're more of an activewear uh, clothing and lifestyle. But to go to sleepwear, uh, that's going to be interesting. I mean, they should not be called Atleta anymore. I mean, they should just be called something else. I don't know what, but whatever. So... It's going to be interesting come maybe next season or even uh, springtime and we'll see how this goes. And so that concludes this Mr. Informal Podcast 139. Uh, I thank you for listening to me from beginning to end. And again, um, I'm thankful if I somehow 
uh, gave you something to learn about, something new, uh, gave you some insights, um, keep you up to date with what's going on in the fashion and tech. And certainly I hope you are safe and you are healthy and hopefully 2021 is a better year. And please again, do not forget to add me on Instagram, M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L. And check out my website, mrinformal.com, M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com. And so that is it for the podcast 139. I am Mr. Informal. I will see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.